Welcome to SCR1 TNO Knitting Project Podcast. My name is Sharon and I'm coming to you from Surrey in the UK where I live with my family, three cats and a dog. This is episode 35, wow, and it's Thursday the 17th of October 2019. If you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. This is my podcast about all my knitting and my rolling rotation of whips which is how I try to get through all my knitting. Um, so let's get into it. Day one is socks and I have finished object. This is my only finished object this week, <laughs> spoiler alert. And this is my scrappy socks from a set by Kelly of Lay Family Yarn. This is her Iron Bridge mini set. It was a set of five minis. It's a seventy five twenty five, and it's a sixty stitch on a two point five millimeter needle. And I did a contrast toe and heel, uh, which are the heel was a cut in heel. Um, I but I cheated and used waist yarn because I find that easier to pick up or at least pick up in a straight line. And the plain heel and toe was a undyed mini I had from Kelly on a different project. There we go, that's the other one. There are two, I promise. Two of them. They're actually still slightly damp because they're still... Um, I have a shadow today, I'm sorry. They're still slightly damp because um, I only blocked them a couple of... Well, yesterday morning, I think. That would be the cat, I'm really sorry. So yeah, so aren't they lovely? Such pretty colours. I really look forward to wearing these for the autumn. So yeah, so that's my... Iron Bridge mini socks. <laughs> I almost need to be back here for the colours, but that close for. But yeah, it's not good, is it? Hmm, sorry about that. I always knew this time of the year I was going to struggle with recording here because um, the sun's quite low. But at least it's sunny today. There we go, weather report. So my next project is hanging out in this bag, which is a lovely little sock bag which has been made by Megan Makes, which is actually Kelly from Lay Family Yarn's daughter, Megan. So that's Megan Lay. And it's a lovely little bag and it's really squishy. So it actually goes in my work bag. And this is my grab it and go project at the moment. I have a little purple mini for contrast, which is one that Kelly gave me, but I don't think it's one of hers. And um, in fact, I think that might be a Lolo did it mini. And then I've got this, which is the yarn badgers, badgerine yarn that she dyed for Sandal Things um, badgerine charity project that she runs this time of year. It goes with the bunting the, and the two prints that I've got there. And this is the socks. So I've literally just cast this on. I have got that's the purple I've started um, I did a cast on in the purple I did a row and then I've gone into the very stripy yarn isn't that lovely so that's going to be my I thought with the purple it made it a little bit spooky and Halloween so I added the purple and yeah isn't that lovely so the main body of the socks will be this black and white stripes and the heel will be in the purple too. I don't think I'll do the toe, I think I'll keep the stripes going down the toe. But yeah, really like it. So that's my grab and go project for the moment. So you'll see those a little bit because they'll be my long term project. But I will only bring them out when I've worked on them. Um, as you can see I did catch, <coughs> cast those on. So that's that one. And then my next one is hanging out in my um, this was a Valentine's bag that Ian actually bought me for Valentine's Day from Craft House Magic. Such a pretty bag. And I wanted a Craft House Magic bag because this is a Craft House Magic pattern. I am doing the Country Garden Socks by Ellie of the Craft House Magic podcast. Now, I haven't actually got a picture of them to show on 
the pattern so I will try and put one up here I'll have a go at that and this is what I did yesterday this is my cast on for yesterday now I tried to start these um, back in the summer when the pattern came out um, but I was suffering at the time with my bad back and I was on diazepam and that's the that's the remains of what happened in the summer because I had to rip them out because they just didn't work and it goes to show how much drugs can affect you because yesterday I didn't have any trouble whatsoever with the pattern <laughs> so you know obviously I didn't think it at the time but the diazepam really affected me so this is a sock set from Ellie Craft House Magic called English Country Garden and there is 100 grams of the main colour which is actually really pretty I'm hoping you're getting some sparkle in there it's sparkly and delicately it's a blue with some pinks and purples and really really pretty yarn so pretty when you're wearing I'm actually knitting with it so I've really wanted to do this so I've been put a little bit put off because I'd got it so wrong but yesterday I cast on and yeah no problems at all so at the time, I'll say at the time, I didn't think I was affected by the drugs, but I obviously was. And then this is the mini that goes with it. And again, I'm hoping you're getting the sparkle on it. I'm sorry about the overhead lights. It's the only way I can get any lighting in here today. So that's the sparkle. And then this is the start of the sock. So I cast on in the green at the top. And I've just gone through the first pattern, which is trellis work. And the idea is, it's an English country garden, so you've got a trellis, you've got a gate, you've got um, butterflies. It's really, really pretty. But yeah, that's the start of them. Oh, I love it. I love the pattern. It's, it's so much fun to knit. So they are my kind of main socks at the moment but obviously if i'm in a place where i just need a vanilla sock i will knit on my stripy socks so they're my two sock whips at the moment i'm trying to keep it to two because i think five is a little excessive if you're a new viewer during the summer i got up to five sock whips and then i sort of got them down again and cast on two more so i was back up to five it's, this is a bit silly i, I probably shouldn't do this <laughs> so i'm going to try it with having a kind of a pattern sock and a vanilla sock um, oh and possibly a scrappy sock but I'll explain that later you can see that later that that kind of turns up in acquisitions so, yeah so that is my day one sock day so day two is shawl day and at the moment I am obsessed with the project of this bag this is a bag by Sherry Iris lovely Sherry Iris this is a beautiful hand embroidered bag from the Autumn Treasures collection and in here I have the litmus cow by the lovely Amy Florence which that is not it yeah I do have a pattern yeah that's a picture of it which I really love and I am using my Autumn's Treasure set by Sherry Iris, which was a set of 10 minis and a, um, a main skein. Now the main skein is this colour here. It's that pretty, it's very autumnal. I really like that. And then last week I was there where that that's a corner of craft progress keeper i was there i was just going into this color so i had done that and then this week i've done these ones so i'm back on going round and round on the main color again now and in this side that's my beginning of round little dragonfly i'm not too sure whose that was and then this little progress keeper which is a scarf came with the set so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the minis in now. Um, and then when I've got the next two, when I put the next two in, 
I am then going to weigh this. I hope that I have at least 50 grams left and I'm going to do another repeat. And then once I've done another repeat, so I'll do another one of these. Once I've done another repeat, um, I can see how long it is. And if it's not long enough and I have some of this left over, I may just do this plain for a little bit. So it'll have like a little stripe of plain. Or I may just do, if I've got enough left of the colours, just do sort of two stripes of this and four stripes of this for a section. Haven't quite decided yet, but we'll see. It's all going to be about yarn management. So I have going to find a... Um, one of my little mini scales i've got about three of them i think i'll pop it in that bag so i can carry it around with me this is a great vanilla knitting project um it was shaw day last friday when i was driving down to shoreham with hubby for our last meal out together before we went away and um i i did i did i did loads of that in the car so yeah i love it it's really nice it's very mindless pattern i'm really looking forward to getting it as well it's so pretty really looking forward to that so that's the litmus cow by amy florence of the stranded podcast and it is a set by sherry iris so yeah that's day two sure day so day three is garment day and my current garment is hanging out in my So Sweet Violet bag. Now, I did start an EDT last week. That's been ripped out and I'm going to cast something else on. But I will explain that on probably next week's podcast. Um, but this week's garment is a little tiny baby garment. It's really, really cute. And it is the Baby Vertebrae by Kelly Van Nykirk. And this is for a present for my lovely yarn daughter, Laura of the lonely knitter podcast and this is going to be very 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 difficult to show so i apologize it has got <laughs> it's really cute it has got this is where i was i'd gone up to there on the sleeve last week so i finished that sleeve off a little tiny sleeve look that's sweet and then i have done the whole of the other sleeve I mean, I say the whole, I mean, it, it takes about an hour to knit a sleeve on a baby garment. And now, I'm going to have to be very careful. I have picked up, and I'm going round around the front, can you say, for the front band. Now, annoyingly, it would appear I'm going to run out of yarn before I run out of that front band. But it doesn't matter, I have got another ball, so. It just means I'll have less of this yarn in his sister's one. But uh, it's so cute. Really, really sweet. And this yarn is um, called Forest Floor. It has got a sparkle on it. And it's by Felt Fusion. This is for a little boy, but both Laura and I think it's gender neutral. It's... Um, Lovely colourway actually, it's really pretty, really pretty. And it's a DK. So it's gonna be kind of nice and nice and thick and warm for him. Be able to wear it more as a jacket really. So yeah, hopefully by next week this might be my finished object. I am very tempted just to go round and round and finish off that band at some point. <coughs> so that's my day three that's my garment day for this week so day four is my crochet day and i'm currently working on the battenberg berg blanket by um sandra paul of cherry heart designs and i um yeah didn't do too much on this what i did last week was i swapped days around and i did my crochet day on saturday and i did my garment day on sunday because on saturday we were um preparing for my daughter and my son-in-law to be's engagement party and i had a lot of time where i was sitting down for a minute or two waiting for something to cook or waiting for something to happen 
where I could quickly crochet, but picking up and putting down a garment was never going to happen. So we swapped over. Now, if you watched the podcast last week, you will remember that this had a lot of ends on the bottom of it. Well, I did get to sew all the ends on. As you can see, it has no, no longer got any ends. So I sewed the ends on, but I didn't make another another square at all, uh, another row at all. <clears throat> and as far as squares are concerned, I made that one, which is a little plain one. The plain is a sparkle plain, undyed from Mothy and the Squid, which is that one there. And then I cast on a tiny, tiny little centre. <laughs> I didn't get very far with it. So the hooks come out, so it's it's getting less and less as I speak. But yeah, I had a tiny little centre. So this is um, made from a from mini sets from West Green Loft Yarns, which I've had on a monthly basis, and they're really pretty, and they all sort of go together. So yeah, we're, we're that's what we're doing basically. We're just doing little minis, little squares from the minis, and it's a set of four of each colour. So I'm on the last, actual last kind of set of these. I've done, if I did purple, you can see it really well. I've done one, two, three, and then four will be down here. Um, and then that'll be the last one from that set. And then I'll move on to a different set. This is really, really pretty. So the rest of the minis are hanging out in this giant bag from So Beautiful by Nicola, who is a lovely bag maker. And this is really is a giant bag. It's got so many minis in here. But in here are all the minis I am planning on using, of which there are a few. Can you see them all? So, oh dear. It's going to take me a while, I think, to get through all of these. This is a great bag to keep them in. And it's got a hot air balloon on it. Because, you know, hot air balloon team. <laughs> I love that bag. So, yeah, so that's day four crochet day. Not that I did much, but I did get my end sewn in. And that's actually, you know, it was a good job on the Saturday. I was sitting there with the, the little baby jacket trying to go round and round on the sleeves but I, I sort of sat there and was thinking actually it'd be far more use, good use of my time if I just sat there and sewed the ends in because I could put that up and put it down so much even more easily so um I did that I, I um sat there with it on the kitchen table and just kept sewing in ends um it was really kind of cool I enjoyed doing that and the working part of that is hanging out in my little hoggy bag from Missy Pottering which is so cute so day five is mystery blanket day and shock and horror I actually worked on a mystery blanket this week um so I do the annual mystery blanket which is by Debbie Abrahams I'm not doing next year's because I am currently working on 2017 I have not started 2018, I have started 2019. So I figured that as I have three blankets on the go, I probably shouldn't get another one. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's a Mr. Debbie Abraham's mystery blanket that I finished earlier on this year. I don't know what year it was. What year was it? What year did we decide it was? 2009 maybe? Can't remember. I remember we looked it up. Right, so this one is hanging out in a giant sheep bag that I got from Ireland a few years ago. And <clears throat> there's lots of yarn in here this one is being done in um, these are all the colours look so she gives you one of these so you can put all your colours on there so you know which colour you're using which is actually really helpful um, and it's mainly being done in Rowan Felted Tweed and Rowan Pure Wool pretty soft actually and <clears throat> right so that's my just to give you an idea that is part of a strip that I'm doing that's one I did ages ago so I'm trying now to catch up and this is the square I did this week now I did um, 
I had oh, I'd done past the button, so I'd, it was already there. So I had to work out where I was and pick up and carry on. But it's I've not been blocked. I haven't blocked this one yet. That's I mean, that's the difference. That has been blocked. You can see it is a square. That one hasn't blocked and it is curling at the edges. So you have to block these. Um, and I have a square mapped out that I blocked this to block it too. But that's felt fusion and something with silk. That one's something with silk. I can't remember it. And it's all done as intarsia. These you're supposed to duplicate stitch in afterwards. I cannot duplicate stitch to save my life. It looks a complete mess. I am actually hoping that through learning to embroider, I may be able to improve my duplicate stitch um, capabilities, but at the moment I can't. So I intarsia these bits in as well, which at least means it's all flat. Um, and my little progress keeper there is a little mousy. I have no idea where he came from. He's very old, but he was sitting in this bag. And I was like, oh, I'll go to stick you on the um, square I've done. There we go. So yeah, that, so mystery blanket day. I actually got the mystery blanket worked on it. I love that square, isn't that pretty? It's a feral one. Such a pretty square. It's got beads in it and I mean this top one <laughs> has got beads and multicoloured bubbles. I hate bubbles, just so you know. You'll very rarely see me knit something with bubbles in it because I hate bubbles, I really do. But I can tolerate them for a square. <laughs> Although there is a lot of bubbles in this square. Um, so yeah, multicoloured bubbles and beads. Thanks Debbie. <laughs> I do love it. So I'm going to get on with that one. So this is 2017s. I'm going to get on with 2017s. I have started 2019s. I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, so that will probably be the next one I get on with once I've got this one finished. Um, and then I'll go back to 2018. Now, Debbie seems to do one year when it's kind of a woolly one, like this one is. And then one year doing cotton glacé, which is what that one is there. Um, and I've got nothing against cotton, but it hurts my hands because I've got arthritis in my hands. It hurts my hands. So it makes me put it down quite a bit. Now, thinking on, because this year was woolly, and also the 2018 is cotton, um, I thought if I miss next year, it's, chances are it's going to be a cotton one. Um, so, I, I, you know, I won't matter. And then I'll get the following year's one. So I might get them all every odd year. So my next one will be 2021. Which, coincidentally, is the year my eldest daughter's getting married. So I may very well make that one for her as a wedding present. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. Well, obviously it won't be a wedding present, but just a present because she got married that year. Oh, yeah, so that's my... Um, mystery blanket once I get them out and I get started again I actually really really enjoy them but it's just the thought of getting all the bits together because they tend to live all over the place because you can't put them all in one bag because a it you'd need a really really big bag and b it's quite heavy to carry around um, so I managed to find both parts of this which I'm really pleased about so I have now got that that's hanging out in that bag <laughs> it's kind of neat. Um, I'm really pleased I've started it again. So that's day five, Mystery Blanket Day. So day six, um, which is hanging out in my Woodland Animals bag, my busy pottering, is um, my Bits and Bobs Blanket Day. And this is a kind of sign of what real life can be like now oh which way which day was day six was that tuesday yesterday was socks wasn't it and yesterday was wednesday so yes it was tuesday so on a tuesday i do guides and i did rainbows this week i only did rainbows because um i fancied the company because that was day in had gone so i could have stayed home during rainbows and knitted but I chose to go and do rainbows because um, I didn't really want to be at home on my own now 
as you can see, that's where I was last week. I have done a row and that is it. That's all I have done is a row on this. It's very pretty. It's my Bits and Bobs blanket by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. I love working on it. Um, but as I said, I really, on Tuesday, really wanted the company. So I went to do rainbows with my eldest daughter. Um, so yeah, so that's day six, scrappy project day. I'm not going to dwell on it too much because obviously I haven't worked on it that much, but real life. And that's the sheep as well with it. That's my magic notebook. She's getting smaller. Um, and that's a good example of why I have six days for my rolling rotation of whips rather than seven days. Because if I was to have seven days, this project would fall on the same day of the week every week. If that was a Tuesday, then I wouldn't be able to knit very much on it because that's the day I do guides or rainbows or occasionally both. So there wouldn't be, I'd never make any progress on it. So by rolling it by six days, this next week will fall on a Monday. And Monday evenings, I don't do anything. So I'll have a lot more time to work on it. And, you know, that's just the way it works. And it does work quite well for me. It does mean that some weeks I get more done on projects than others. And eventually, like those socks at the end, beginning of the programme, I um, I get done. So eventually stuff does get done. It's nice being organised. It's nice knowing each day what I'm going to be knitting on and not having to sort of sit there for half an hour and thinking, oh, what do I fancy knitting on today? I'll just look at it and go, oh, okay, that's that day. I will knit on that. And even if I don't fancy it, nine times out of ten, once I start, knitting on it I kind of go oh yeah actually I really love this I'm going to knit on it um occasionally like the swapping the Saturday and Sunday round if I look at a day and go oh this is insane I'm not going to be able to work on um, I'm, I'm not going to be able to take my mystery blanket out of the house but I've got three day, uh, three hours of car knitting I would swap that now what's after that so that yeah so I'd probably swap that with this because this would be car knitting so occasionally I'll look at it and swap things around, but I don't do it very often. But Saturday, yeah, it was chaos here, as you can imagine, getting ready for a party. And we catered it, so there was a lot of cooking going on. My Cozy Memories blanket, and that is hanging out in this giant bag from Busy Pottering. And I need to square on this a morning. I haven't knit one this morning, but um, yeah, I woke up really late. And... This is, I've actually squared off. So there's a, some squared off video, which I will put at the end of the, um, I'm not really showing it to you. I'm trying to find the squares I've worked this week. <laughs> it's really quite funny. Um, yeah, I'll put the video on at the end of the end of the podcast. That's what I'm trying to say. So these are my squares this week. That is a tink dye yarn. That is a tink dye yarn. That is a tink dye yarn. Uh, it was at that point, after I had those three come out, I decided I wasn't making an EDT in it because I didn't like it that much. Um, that is a random mini that I haven't got the foggiest idea what it is, but it's very pretty. That is... Oh, it was off of a pair of socks, but I can't remember what it was. Whose it was. That might have been a Down Sheepy Lane. That might be Down Sheepy Lane. That is um, from my EDT and is Grace of the Babbles podcast and that's her Ivy. So that's this week's um, squares. So that's right, six. <laughs> Today would be seven but I haven't put it on yet. But yeah, I am going to. It's huge. Um... It's bang on as well. I haven't got any spare squares in hand. I haven't got any spare squares, but it's, well, when I do, do today's, it's the right amount of squares for a square a day. So I'm up to date on it. But as I said, I will put some video footage of that at the end of the podcast because um, I took some video of it when I squared it off. So my acquisition, acquisitions section this week is um, bigger than it should be. But I'm going to start off with the first thing that I didn't buy. This has been kindly donated by the lovely Nicola of So Beautiful by Nicola. That is her label. 
and this is her details. She's got a lovely colour. There we go. And she has donated a prize for the stripy sock cow. It is a lovely little knot bag. It's got unicorns on it, so it's, you know, definitely got a special place in my heart. It's really great. Very, It's beautifully made, absolutely beautifully made. Perfect for on-the-go socks. Isn't it lovely? Thank you so much, Nicola. I have messages to say thank you, Bert. And I'm always blown away when people donate. I just can't believe people are so kind as to donate something they've made or created as a prize for my podcast. So thank you so much, Nicola. Absolutely love it. Well, that's going to go into the prize bag for the Stripey Sock Cow. I will show you all the prizes again in a couple of weeks. Um, if you would like to donate a prize, I would be very grateful. Please get in touch. You can email me at str1tno at outlook.com. I have totally forgotten to say where you can find me, but all the show notes, links to all the show notes are at the bottom of this video. And yeah, totally, totally forgot to mention that earlier. Right, acquisitions. Um, <laughs> oh dear, let's start with this one. This is the um, Ironbridge collection from Late Family Yarn which is Autumn in the Gorge. They're very pretty. These are going to be socks. Um, not sure when, not yet. Then They're not on the in the list just yet. But they're very pretty. Then I have this beautiful, beautiful yarn, which is one of Kelly's new Christmas colourways, which she'll be launching soon. I managed to snag one when it was on the shop. Um, and then she took them down again, so I'm really pleased I managed to snag one But they are going in this weekend, I think Kelly said Isn't it pretty? This is fairy tale in New York I've seen it lit up as well, it's on her Instagram, it's really lovely So pretty Love it did you say you were doing some sparkle in it as well? This isn't sparkle. I think if there was sparkle, I may have to get the sparkle too. I do really like it. So they are going on my needles quite quickly because they're going to be my Christmas socks. So come November the 9th, um, I will swap all my projects into Christmas project bags and I will start knitting Christmas socks. I may very well come off project as well because that's when I tend to come off project and just knit Christmas socks. But um, We'll worry about that in the end of November. At the moment, <laughs> we're still on project. And yeah, this is gorgeous, isn't it? Speckles there. So that is Fairy Tale in New York. She also, in her latest update, did a um, potluck mini set. And this is the one I managed to get. Thank you, Kelly. I love it. It's so pretty, look. It makes such pretty scrappy socks. I do love them, they're so lovely. So talented. I think I've spoken to Kelly most days this week, it's been great. <laughs> We've reconnected, it's been great. So that's that, and then she had a couple of mini sets. Now let's get this around the right way. This is the bright set, yeah, this is the bright set. This is part of the set she's had for a while. Um, and this is the bright set which I hadn't got, I was like, ah, she really would like that one. Very blue. Um, it's not quite that blue in real life. It's possibly a better representation of it. Sorry for the crinkling, those of you that are on headphones. I apologise. That's that one. And then, this is Kelly's Gorgeous Autumn Set. It really is very pretty. Now, um, my youngest daughter saw this um, and wanted it immediately because um, she just said she'd like to hang it on her wall. I said, well, rather than you hanging it on your wall, would you like me to make you some scrappy socks? And she said, yes, please. 
So these are probably going to go on the needles sooner rather than later and I'm going to make her some scrappy socks from these. They're very pretty, aren't they? So, brilliant. Thank you, Kelly. They're gorgeous. So that's that one. My next one up is also a mini set and that is this month's minis from Giddy Yarns. I'm not sure whether they're September's or October's. I'm really sorry, Helen. I should have looked that up first. I will look it up and put it down here. <laughs> but they're very pretty. Now, so far, I have got every month of these, um, and they're all in a box upstairs. So at some point, probably during Vlogmas, I'll be honest, when December's turns up, that might make quite a good fun thing to do during Vlogmas. Um, I'm going to get them all out together and lay them down together and um, video them. Um, and I'm thinking I might do a corner to corner gradient blanket in them. Because I think that would be quite a fun crochet blanket. Um, or the other thought I had was doing a mitre square blanket for 2020, just in these. But yeah. Um, they're really, really pretty. I love them. I love these sets. So yeah, that's something I'm going to do during Vlogmas is video them all together. So that's some good yarns. Um, my next one is a stitch marker. Now this is the um, October Club from the Corner of Craft. So if you've not got yours yet, please look away. Um, because this only arrived yesterday, so it occurs to me that some people may not have it. But if you look away, this is brilliant. I really love it. It's so great. I think that's going to have to go on Megan's socks when I um, knit Megan's socks, don't you? So yeah. Okay, if you've... Um, you can look back now, if you've looked away. I really like that one. My other acquisition um, was brought around by an Instagram post and it's this. Isn't that beautiful? And I decided I wanted a fade. I want to do, um, well I want to do a jumper and a fade basically. I, I'm not too worried about which jumper because I'll just fade it myself but there we go. So that would be the bottom colour. And then this would be the next colour. This is all down Shaky Lane. That would be the next colour. So that will fade into that. Then that will be there. So that will fade into that one. And then these are all shipped down Sheepy Lane. That will be the first colour. So this will be the top bit. <laughs> it's so difficult, isn't it, to hold a fade up. So that will be the top bit. That one there. No. <laughs> that one there. <laughs> that will be the top one. So that will be up here. That will start it. Then it, that one has got that one, that colour there, has got that colour there. So that one will fade into that one. Then in here, that colour, sort of the darker blue speckles in there, is this colour here. So that one will fade into this one. And then... The darker blue in here, if you can see it, there's, there is some dark blue in there. It's the blue in here. We'll fade into that one. So I'm really looking forward to doing this, and that is going to be my next jumper cast on when I have got the baby cast on off the needle and when I've got my colour work one off the needles. So that is my fade. Might be spring before I get to it, but that is my fade. Um and it came with a beautiful little mini. Thank you, Debbie so cute i love that it's such a pretty color so my final acquisition is some little stitch markers and this is from copo designs i saw them on instagram and i fell in love with them so that's a little gnome i don't know how well you can see him because i've still got him in the plastic because i didn't really want to open it so it's a gnome um a little snowflake and a little bulb stitch marker and then there was also these, which are, let me see, they're all in a little, and they're so cute. Sorry, I don't know your name, but she's 
so talented. She does such pretty stitch markers. And I asked for them with the, um, that, like the earring fixtures because then I can use them as actual stitch markers or I can use them as progress keepers. So, but yeah, so pretty. Um, again, that was a little set I saw on Instagram. I need to keep off Instagram. And because she's absolutely lovely, she always sends a little thank you as well. And that is a little, it's a little snowflake thank you. And um, I'm going to pop that in the, um, in the prize the prize pot so this is copo uk at etsy.com that's her hopefully you can see that and check out her um instagram because her instagram is beautiful and her stitch markers are amazing i really, really love them so that is going to go in the prize pot and they are going to go on my when i swap over to my christmas makes they'll go on those Right, that's it. Just live stuff now. Um, so we had the engagement party. That was fun. I will try and put some photos in at the end of that. Um, if I've got some video of us dancing, I may include that, but I may not. <laughs> I may also not have any video of me dancing because I was the one on this side of the camera. Um, then... So that was Saturday night. So Sunday we just had a really quiet day. Um, Monday was a work day and I had a quiet evening with Ian because that was his last night before he went. He left Tuesday morning. Um, not quite so much of a mess this time around as I was last time. Um, I kind of learned a few lessons from that and have a few coping mechanisms in place now. So um, kind of doing all right to be honest. So that happened Tuesday. Yesterday, um, I had a quiet evening which was really nice me and Meg's curled up and watched clock in the wall the house with the clock in the wall that was it really good um we got the other uh, other half of that to watch I'm actually gonna possibly watch it again from the beginning because it was really really good but I was concentrating on learning that sock pattern that I started so um I may watch that again and then this weekend I've got some storage solutions coming from this stuff behind me um and I'm going to um, have a tidy out in this end of the room because it looks like a bomb tip um, <laughs> so that's happening um, and on Friday night we have fireworks because my where we do rainbows, brands and guides there is a little village across from us and they if they do it the weekend of fireworks it clashes with our big display in our town um, so they don't get that many people there, so they thought they'd try it early and kind of do a Halloween-y one. Um, so we're doing that on Friday, we're helping out with that. And then hopefully over the weekend I'm going to do some tidying and um, I don't know what I'm doing Sunday yet. Um, I'm tinkering with the idea of going helping the girls at our local panto, but um, I don't know. I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> I seem to be, I, I really do need to tidy my house first. Definitely need to get that done. <laughs> right, I think that's it. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to, to chat about this week. It's been one a bit a bit of a week, shall we say? <laughs> right, I'm gonna sign off. So I hope you all have a great week wherever you are. Take care, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.